What's up guys, my name is Lex Valtes and welcome to another edition of Learn with Lex. Today we're going to be jumping straight into the big three dollars. This is a tournament that you guys play very often. It's regular speed, there's no bounties, there's no whistles, no bells. Uh, I just want to show you guys some pure regular poker format because I think that in fact is the basis of things. You can see the play timer up ahead. That means that uh, you will see how much elapsed between hands and I'm going to show you every single decision. Enjoy. All right, so this might be a little bit mind-blowing to you guys. I'm going to throw this hand away. Um, this hand that doesn't have any redeeming qualities, um, one of the worst things that it starts with is the fact that somebody opens it uh, from the early position. Um, that means that they're going to be relatively strong, right? That range of hands, that's why we always refer to when we say range, it always means a range or a group of hands. So his range has a lot of very strong aces in it. Now, they get called uh, by somebody in late position, also has a bunch of ace x hands in it, or some suited connectors, or hands like king-queen, or maybe pairs. And then this player has kind of a similar range to that player. Think about our hand, ace three, and what the capabilities are. So if we flop a three, are we gonna be good? Pro go up against a probable pair here, a probable pair here, and uh, or suited connectors, or suited connectors and pair here. So the three is struggling, right? The three never makes top pair. Um, it's mostly, most of the time gonna be bottom pair. Um, so we don't really play for the, the three in our hands. So if we don't play for the three in our hands, then think about what's really alerting us here, right? We think, oh, we only have to pay 80 more. Uh, we get eight to one. Okay, we get good odds, but odds at what, right? Um, so now we think about our ace. Cool, we hit an ace. Check, check, they bet. Immediately you think, uh-oh. First thing you think, uh-oh. And the hands just started, right? Board is ace high. Bet, call. Now you want to fold. What if, he, what if they bet? And it goes fold, fold, and you have an ace. And you have a three kicker. And you call. And the turn is a brick, an eight, or whatever. You check. They bet again. What do you end up doing now? You end up folding a lot. So here you see that this hand has so few possibilities. Honestly, the best thing that you could flop is a, is a flop like 10-4 in a deuce, because then at least you have a gut shot to the effective nuts. Um, so this hand doesn't have any redeeming qualities. So when people talk about implied odds, they often talk about odds um, that are generated because of the money that you can make. So it's implied, right? There's implied value. So the value is not right there, but it's implied that it comes later on. Uh, now this hand, as reverse implied odds. This means it looks safe now and it looks like you get good odds, but there's gonna be a point where you're gonna get uh, where you're gonna get milked or where you're gonna lose against a better range of hands. So this hand is just all kinds of trouble. You really have to think about the redeeming qualities of your hands and how do those redeeming qualities uh, stack up versus the other players. At this point, it's uh, there's there's just no no redeeming qualities. So there, therefore, I decided to fold, and I think it's uh, I think it's the good and only decision. Um, you want to be very, very careful with offsuited aces, uh, multi-way like this, because, like I said, you hit your even when you have ace a seven here, right? You hit a seven, you're not that happy. You hit your ace, you're not that happy. So what are we playing for? Are we trying to flop trips? All of a sudden, when you try to flop trips, that 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 pot odds that you thought you were calling for just doesn't look that good anymore. I would have definitely raised this hand if there wasn't a limper. Usually what you want to do when you play versus limps is you want to cut the bottom part of what you would raise. Let's say the, just as a the weakest king that you would raise here would be king eight offsuit. So if there's a limper, you would cut like king eight offsuit, king nine offsuit, and then you could still raise king 10 offsuit. That's a really good way to go about it versus limpers. You don't want to keep playing your worst hands because your worst hands are in there also to steal the blinds. They're not in there to play a multi-way pot. And I would definitely start by cutting out the offsuited part first because offsuit plays harder after the flop. Because obviously when you have a suited hand, you flop a flush draw, you have more possibilities. When you have an offsuited hand, you will not uh, have the possibility of uh, flopping flush draws. Makes a big difference. All right, so we have a nice hand here that we're going to play regardless. Usually with hands like ace-jack or ace-10 or king-queen, the more people that have position on you, so the more people that are behind you, the more you'd like to re-raise. You don't want to end up playing versus two, three people out of position. However, here I'm in the cutoff. I do think my hand plays really well. Very easy hand to play. 
And so people oftentimes ask me the difference between high stakes tournaments and lower stakes tournaments, if you can play the same. In a high stakes tournament, uh, I could definitely, for instance, make an all-in here. Sometimes if I was playing against a very aggressive player, that would, for instance, have like ace-5 or ace-jack offsuit here, which they would fold. Ace-jack offsuit or king-queen. Um, but on these stakes, I'm just going to throw it away. I'm going to give strength a lot more respect on these stakes because people just bluff less. People do more crazy shit and people do more silly shit, but people do bluff less in terms of smart aggression. And I think that's something that's incredibly important uh, to remember. Uh, so therefore, I'm going to give this some respect. And I think that works out well. So it's, it is really funny because that is one of the most asked questions on my stream is the strategy that I see you play, would it work on my stakes as well? And, you know, not the exact strategy, uh, you know, uh, uh, click for click. But you need to know what good strategy is before you can deviate from it. Because otherwise, you're just doing random shit. All right, so we flop a really strong hand. I need to get our stacks in the middle. I'm going to bet pot, and that'll leave me pot on the river as well. As you can see, I bet 10 in 10, and now I have 30 in 30. It's really a bit complicated to, uh, to do that automatically, organically, but it's, uh, it's good to get used to that. Obviously, we're going to get value. Uh, he's going to have a bunch of ace jack. 10 jack. Probably not a good idea to call with 10 jack. I'm gonna have some backdoor club draws. Uh, I'm gonna have some uh, queen jack, king jack that might wanna bet again. So, um, I mean, it does block two pair ace 10, but think about all the other hands that you can call here with, right? That have better redeeming qualities. Um, if, if you have ace deuce uh, or ace four or ace five, you block so many strong hands that make two pair like this one. Uh, this hand just doesn't do that much. So you want to be very careful about what you want to think where your calls are coming from, right? If you have a lot of hands to call with in a certain scenario, which is definitely this one, then you don't want to just add them all in there. Because if you call with this hand, it just means that you're always calling. And you want to be extremely, extremely careful of that. Nice hand there. And uh, just to illustrate, just to talk a little bit about that ace 10 points. So you need to know what good strategy is before you can deviate from it. And people oftentimes say, oh, fuck GTO. I don't want to learn anything or solvers or... Any of that stuff is so useless to me because I play $1 tournaments. But I agree, executing the strategy of what people use with solvers or math programs and stuff, if you if you execute that exact strategy, you're not going to make the most money on lower stakes. However, you need to know what really good strategy is before you can adjust it to your stakes. Look, Just like I just did there. I know what good strategy is. What is my adjustment? My adjustment there is good strategy could be that ace-10 is an all-in because my opponent's bluff. What changes when I play lower stakes? My opponents will be less aggressive in a smart way before the flop. So what do I do? I fight back less versus aggression. It's like it's a very simple step program and I, I know that because I know a strategy that's leveled above these stakes, right? So that's why you can always learn a lot from watching my stream or other streamers because you learn good strategy and it's up to you to see and apply it to lower stakes. But not anymore, because now you have me to do it with you and for you through this video series. Guys, if you're looking for a place to talk poker, I have just the place for you. I have my own poker discord. We can talk about anything, strategy, the poker news. You can share your brags, your beats. You can ask me for advice or you can just chat to random people about poker. You will also be notified when I go live and when there's a new video out. So check the link in the description, join the Discord, and see you there. All right, we have pocket tens here. Um, this hand is too strong to just play, and we're gonna re-raise it from the big blinds. Always have to make it more from the big blinds. You really wanna aim for like five. Uh, when you're deeper, you can even make it more here. When there's another caller here, you can definitely make it like 13. Uh, once we make this move, we will be playing for stacks. Against the 40 big blind stack, it'll be easy. 40 big blind stacks are pretty much never supposed to flat call here with high pocket pairs. So versus them, we're extremely safe. Now, of course, we have this debt money in there. Um, we're just going to have to go for this hand. Uh, and this this looks crazy, but we have 10 big blinds invested. Uh, trust me, they do have uh, some bluffs here sometimes, especially when uh, players seem like regulars. And we're just going to get the hand in. And don't forget that against Ace King, we have... 57% so um, all the times they have a king is really good for us um, obviously when um, uh, when they have aces and stuff we're dead but they're also going to have some bluffs there's some dead money with blinds and antis in the spot and sometimes you just have to take these flips this really is just the way uh, the way things work unfortunately 
But tens play a whole lot better than uh, than you might think. All right, we're gonna fill there. Now we just have to readjust. We have a short stack, and that's fine. All right, so we're a bit shorter now. Uh, there's lots of suited hands I'm gonna limp with. I'm gonna shove this one. One of the main reasons being is that it's really great to fold out a hand like king six offsuit, king seven offsuit. So when you have a king or a queen in your hand, you really want to see what your move does and what you would like it to do, right? So if you had, if I have had like king jack there, if I go all in, I'm gonna fold out king eight, king nine, king seven, and that's no good because I wanna keep those hands in, right? If there's a king on the flop, then I'm in a heavily dominant situation, or even when we just check both uh, and we both flop a king, I'm in heavily dominated, a heavily dominating situation. So, um, but because my kicker is so low, I decided I just want the blinds. I went all in for 16 big blinds and uh, but also, the higher the amount of big blinds, the, the bigger the chances that I'm just gonna limp there. Limping is just calling, of course, for the people that are not aware of that lingo. Over here, we only have 14 and a half big blinds. Don't start panicking too early. There's so much you can still do. Uh, going all in here is a massive mistake. You're tired, you just lost your stack, you're grumpy, you wanna go home maybe, or you wanna have a good chance, or just go home. But uh, don't waste your money, don't waste your tournament. It's very easy to come back from stacks like this. Um, Sometimes if you're down in nine big blinds, two doubles later, you're at 40, you feel king of the world. So um, stay patient, um, pre-flop shoving ranges. So that means that what group of hands you should shove from what position are actually pretty easy to Google. So uh, you can learn a little bit. You can uh, note, obviously it's not allowed to just look and play, but you can note down your mistakes, like save this hand, save a screenshot, you know, just yazo it and look it up later, see if you made a mistake. Um, but don't get, especially with offsuited aces from these positions, they're absolute dog shit. So be very careful of that. Um, you know, even over here, if you have nine big blinds, ace, nine big blinds only, a7 offsuit would just be a fold. So um, just because all the hands that are gonna call you are gonna do so well against you, most hands will have 44%, and then when you're dominated, you're in the dust. So be careful with that. All right, so our patience is rewarded. We have a great situation here, three big blinds, open we're gonna get it in with ace jack doing perfect we need to fade a king or queen and boom just like that 29 big blinds you know when you had uh, when you're thinking about your ace for offsuit uh, from mid position nothing to fret there's there's always going to be a situation and um even if there's not it's more important to be patient and just wait than make mistakes uh, so many times people will tell me oh I raised the 8-6 suited from early position. I was like, but it's not a raise. And they're like, yeah, but I was card dead for two hours. Okay, so you were card dead and now you start making mistakes. You know, it's just uh, doesn't make any sense. So stay patient and situations like this will come along more often than not. All right, ace-queen, I don't really want to re-raise here. If I re-raise, I turn it into a bluff. When somebody raises from early position and you re-raise or three bets, as they say, with ace-queen and you go and they go all in on you, you're just not looking that great. Uh, it's going to be a lot of pairs, it's going to be a lot of ace-king, going to be a lot of uh, uh, aces-kings, obviously, and just never hands that we do really well against. Like People will oftentimes not go for ace-jack and just call it or fold it, so... Um, once they get out, this is a really good position for us. There's going to be a lot of king queen suited here, but also pocket eights. Obviously, also their strongest hands, but because it's only 21 big blinds, there's also going to be ace jack, ace 10 suited, all these hands that we completely dominate. So we're just going to make an easy call. As I said, they have ace jack, boom, bada bing, bada boom. And that's also uh, a really nice advantage uh, of flatting is that these 18 and 20 big blind stacks behind are just more prone to uh, to give you some action with hands that you dominate. All right, again, we open the button, uh, we get all in on. This is a very, very easy call from our perspective. And like I said earlier, these situations are gonna present themselves. Again, we're in a dominating position. These positions will come. And that is a easy dub for us. So before we're on 14 big blinds thinking um, that we could go all in with ace four, probably you guys would. And now we have 55 big blinds, even though the blinds went up. And this is barely 20 minutes later. So this is how fast tournaments can go. And it just shows you that patience is so incredibly important. And now after all, those all ins were obviously cruising. We waited for some good spots where we had a range advantage. Pocket five seems very strong. It would be disaster though if we race from here and we get uh, re-raised by the limper. So I'm not gonna do it. I really wanna see a flop. 
this hand plays perfect even if they come along if i had a five i'm gonna be good you know that's how easy you can think about sets uh, even if it's like five six seven sure somebody will have eight nine sometimes for a straight but you can't really think that way because it happens so few and far between so you really have to keep in your in your head of course there's like important uh you know if it's five six seven eight and and there's a, a straight possibility with just a nine then you want to be careful but generally speaking when you hit three of a kind you can treat it as the nuts we're going to continue betting it's very unlikely somebody has a spade draw the pot was so small on the flop it would have been so easy to take a stab with it i'm going to do something called block betting i'm going to bet super small showing that i have an interest in the pot but i definitely don't want to check and them to bet 1200. i can if i bet small enough the advantage is that i can still get called by a hand like king 10 or king 9 or king 8 or whatever uh, that doesn't have a spade um but um, or eight seven or ace eight whatever you want to call it my small bet will still get called by those but i do show i have an interest and sometimes people even call with just a six or something right and if i if i check they might bet bigger with that so i lose a lot less there and i still sort of block the action now it's very important once you start playing some higher stakes to also do this with good hands because otherwise people will just note you down that you always block bet with hands that don't want, really want to see action so what i could do on my own stakes for instance i could also do this sometimes uh, uh with a hand like the jack of spades or something i could do the jack of spades and then i could also call when they raise for instance you know so important to think about this is actually where i'm gonna cut the video we have enough material for one video now don't worry i'm gonna continue recording so we can get to some of the later stages in these tournaments as well i hope you really enjoyed it please like subscribe comment in the section down below and also what's really important guys there's a discord link in the description if you don't have anybody to talk poker with if you have any more questions about this or you want to ask me personally about some hands join my discord there's all kind of people from our community everybody's very welcoming you can ask any questions you want all right see you guys there thank you so much